What's going on everybody out there in YouTube land? Longball here bringing you a little gameplay video of two of my most favorite games. I got a special feature here for you. I got some Halo and some Call of Duty Black Ops action. And the reason I'm doing that is it's a special time of the season. We got Labor Day weekend is this weekend, which means it's the mark of the end of the summer. I know, I know, it's sad, to, it's sad to see summer go because all of us love summertime. You get your ass out there, get the sunburn on, get your tan on. All the girls looking hot and these all sliced up, diced up, and tanned up. You know, all that good stuff. But it does come to an end. And for us in the, here in the, in the States, Labor Day weekend is usually the mark of the end of summer. Though the date is like September 21st or some crap like that. I can't exactly remember the number offhand, but we do mark the end of summer being around Labor Day weekend. But with that being said, we have got some good, good things to look forward to in the fall. Fall for the gaming season is great. That's when all the new games come out. September, October, November, all the good stuff's coming out. But what I want to talk about in this video is two of my most favorite games of all time. For first person shooters multiplayer aspect, my favorite two games are Halo and Call of Duty. This year, for the first time in so long, we've got the two titans going at it one-on-one, -on -one, head to head, to try and grab that top spot again. That's right, Halo 4 is returning, Call of Duty is bringing Black Ops 2, and it should be spectacular. And the reason I say that is because, you know, we're all looking forward to Call of Duty Black Ops. I mean, for, but for the longest time, for the longest time, as long as I can remember, Way back in the day, Halo set the standards for multiplayer gaming. It was what everyone was wanting to play. I mean, for crying out loud, we had MLG. Major League Gaming was televised on television, on, on Spike TV, if I'm not mistaken. You, you had Final Boss versus Carbon in the tournaments. The Walshie and the Ogres. And uh, I can't exactly remember the guys from Carbon back up, but God, that was way back in the day. But you had you know, Team Deathmatch, Oddball. Custom games. I mean, we would spend nights and hours playing custom games only, never even getting to matchmaking. And then, you know, but what made Halo so different, and, and the differences I see in Halo and Call of Duty was Halo is more of a team-oriented game. I mean, you ranked up based off wins and losses. Wins and losses meant everything in Halo. Whereas in Call of Duty, it's more about individual performance. You rank up based off your individual stats in that game. Nobody really focuses on whether they win or lose, and I'm just talking about this in team deathmatch aspects. I'm not talking about all the objective games, because objective games is a whole different world, and I don't play objective games very very often. I play team deathmatch. I play it in both game types. That's what I always like to play. So, you know, Halo was, was the, he was the king of the mountain. Up on top, standards were set, and this is what you gotta meet. Slowly, Halo began to fall away from what made them so great. It was function over features. That's what they pride themselves on. But slowly with Halo 3 and Reach, they drifted away from that. They started focusing on features, adding bubble shields and invisibility, and, and they decreased the strength of the battle rifle and put the burst where the timing between the bursts of the rifle was, was too far apart and it just took too long to kill people. And it, it just, it lost the flow of the game. People just, it didn't, it didn't have that same it factor. Well, with perfect timing comes Call of Duty 4, which in my opinion, Call of Duty 4 is what set Call of Duty on the map. But it came at such a good time. It came during Halo's decline. So therefore, you know, Call of Duty comes in here and offers you this fast paced, in your face, up your ass, individual, you know, backpack a team. You can jump into a team deathmatch lobby and you don't have to, who cares if your teammates do bad? If you play good enough, you could almost carry your team to a victory almost every single time and if you didn't win it didn't matter because everybody was focusing on everybody focuses on Halo on Call of Duty on their individual performance because that's how you level up you level up based off your individual stats I've probably said that a couple of times in this video and I apologize if I'm repeating myself but it's just kind of what I'm emphasizing the points of what I'm talking about you know both games are so good they're, they're both really good games but you know Halo has kind of fell off the map they've been gone for two or three years now, I think, something like that. But they're coming back. They're coming back this fall. And they're going to try to take on the giant that is Call of Duty right now. He's the king of the mountain. 
and Halo wants that title back. Which is great for us. It's good to have competition in these games. Because, I mean, we've all been excited about Black Ops 2. We're all very excited. I'm so excited about Black Ops 2. But how many times have we been excited about Call of Duty? We've been excited about Call of Duty for the last two or three years, and he's let us down every time. But here's the reason why I think Black Ops 2 is probably going to be one of the best Call of Duties to date. And you can thank Halo for this. They know there is competition out there now. I know there's a bunch of other good games, but I don't want to get into those because right now I'm just wanting to compare Call of Duty and Halo because to me, that's those are the two that always set the standards for first-person shooters. They know now. Call of Duty, the people that develop the game, Treyarch right now, knows that they have got to compete with Halo again because Halo, if it's going to make a comeback, they have to do it now. It has to be right now because if they don't do it, if this Halo 4 fails, you can forget it ever coming back. So they've got to they've got to set a standard. Don't think that Treyarch doesn't know that. Don't think that they're not going to put their best efforts in to this game to try to satisfy all the customers. You know, the reason why we play these games is for fun. But at the same time, we all got a little bit of competitive drive in us. We just want the best. So, I'm telling Treyarch right now, focus on your function over features. Get back to what made you great. Because in the long run, it doesn't matter how many kill streaks you have. It doesn't matter how many perks you offer. It doesn't matter about none of that stuff. Because if you don't bring the proper function to the game and the hit detection isn't right, and if it is correct in Halo 4, which I do believe it's going to be because Halo never had a problem with hit detection. They had a problem with the way the gun functioned when they decreased the power of the battle rifle. All they got to do is just change that formula back to the way it was in Halo 2 and it's done. The hit detection was always good in that game. So, Treyarch, Call of Duty, I love you guys. Please, bring back hit detection. Good hit detection. That will keep the longevity of your game. That will keep everybody wanting to play Call of Duty. But if you don't, there is that giant, that sleeping giant has been awakened. And we may end up getting to reap the benefits from it. But anyway, guys, I hope all y'all have a great Labor Day weekend. And I hope uh, all of you are looking forward to the fall gaming season. And I hope you enjoy this video. I am out of here. We'll see you guys.